Hey, how's it going? And today this is kind of a fun tutorial, but then it's also very educational. And you may or may not have a practical application for this, but I just think it's kind of cool. What we're trying to do is get variables into the sequencer so that we can manipulate those variables and then use them for animating and other kinds of things that maybe we're up to. But there is an older tutorial I was trying to follow in Unreal Engine, and I think they left this point of the tutorial out, and it was kind of frustrating me. So I did a little bit more research, and this is what I figured out a way to get variables into the sequencer. So anyway, we're just going to hit play, and this is kind of what I ended up with. Is this kind of insane number system. It's just float values incrementing on a timeline, and they're coming in pretty fast and furious. So I don't know if this is something you might have practical application for, but this is just one example of what you can do with the sequencer as far as feeding values into it and manipulating variables. So I hope you find it helpful. Okay, so I'll be back in just a minute and hopefully this will make more sense once I get going. Okay, I'm back. So to get started with this, we're just going to we're just in the third person template to get started with this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to right click, I'm in the content level folder, and I'm gonna create a blueprint, and I'm just gonna call this my, my, oops, my actor. And then we're gonna double click into this, and we're gonna go ahead and dock it. And basically any variable that we create in a blueprint You'll see. So let's let's just do this. So I'm going to go create a float variable. So let's just call this my float values. And then we'll just set it to a float. And it could be an integer or whatever you want to set, whatever variable you want to set. We'll make it instantable. And then wherever you see exposed to cinematics, basically it means exposed to the sequencer. So once we check that box, this will be, when we open a new level sequence and we bring in this actor, this blueprint, we will be able to access this. So let me show you that right now. That's what that checkbox does. So if I come in here now, let's say right click and I'm gonna create a sequence, level sequence. There it is. I'll just leave it called my new level sequence or whatever. I'm gonna drag this into the scene, my blueprint right there. Now, if I double click this, with that selected, my new blueprint selected, if I come into track, add a sequencer, my actor, you'll see it's right here. Now, if I click here to add, you'll see I have a category now called properties and I can add my float value to it. So that's great, right? So now I hit control. I'm gonna scroll out. I'm gonna drag this out so we have a nice long animation. And this is really cool. So I'm on the first frame, I'll click there. I'm going to add a keyframe. I'm going to come down to the last frame. And now I'm just going to move this value up to whatever number, just some random high number. And if I come back to the beginning and I hit play, you'll see that that value is incrementing now. And what's cool about this is that this value, this value is updating in the blueprint because it's it's coming right off of here. So that's that's pretty cool, right? So the only thing we got to look at real quick is I need to drag the level sequence into the scene as well, right there. And just make sure that it's not on autoplay and then it's not on loop because we're going to trigger this on an event begin play. Our blueprint here, my actor, is going to trigger that blueprint to play. So let's make that happen right now. So all we're going to do here is go to the event graph. I'm going to delete this second node here. We're going to click this node right here. And we're just gonna drag off of this and go create sequence player right here. And then under level sequence, we just pick the one we just made. And then if we drag off of out actor, I can go play sequence. Should be able to drag play sequence. This one right there and that it's already wired up to the target. And then all we have to do is just hook this up. So then when we hit event begin play, because my blueprint's in the scene, the sequencer will start playing that float value, incrementing it. Then what's interesting about this is that, let's go ahead and add a text renderer too so we can 
see what's going on here. It makes it really look cool. It's This is a lot more exciting than a, a print string. So I added a text renderer. I'm going to drag this over here. Okay. So now we have to unfortunately drive this off of an event tick because there's nothing, uh, the sequences are as plain, but there's nothing here to push the value through. So even though the sequencer is incrementing at an insane rate, there's nothing here to drive that to update our text renderer. So we need the event tick to drive to drive the update. So I don't like using event ticks, but sometimes there's just no way around it. So here we'll just get my float value and go set. Or actually we can we don't even need set. We just need to get get it. So we'll come in here to get. And then off of here we're gonna go set. Set text. Right here. And then we're just gonna pop this in here and this in here. And this will auto convert once I plug it in. And then if we come into the viewport, we see our text renderer, if we select it, you know, we can we can make this look cool a lot cooler if we want. You know, we can increase the size quite a bit too. Make it look pretty ridiculous. And compile and say, but we can only adjust it in here because it's associated with this blueprint. So if we come into the scene, now there's our, our blueprint. I can drag this up and let's let me rotate this around. It's pretty bright in here, so I can just hit Control L and just darken it up so we can see that text a little bit better. And then what should happen is that when I hit play, this value should increment on our sequencer. So let's see if that's what happens. Yep, see how cool that is? That could be something like the national debt clock or you know, how many people are um, going to go see Dune or <laughs> something like that. But anyway, I thought you might find this helpful. So the thing to know is that on this blueprint, any other variables that we add, as long as we, as long as we, like, so if we want to come in here and, I don't know, call this my Boolean and change this to a Boolean and make it instance edible and exposed to cinematics and compile and save that. If we go back into our little sequence and click here, you'll see now we have access to that Boolean value. So that's how you get variables, data types, different variables and data types into the sequencer. So I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate it. Take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.